A couple weeks ago was Maker Camp in upstate New York, which, if you don't know about it, is an amazing event for makers to hang out and try their hands at different disciplines. There's blacksmithing, woodworking, sewing, epoxy, and so much more. Last year, Michael Alm, Wesley Treat, and myself built and burned a 25-foot tall dinosaur as a closing ceremony for the event. This year, unfortunately, Michael wasn't able to make it, but Keith Decent took his place, and we built and burned a 25-foot tall jackalope. Here's how we did it. Oh, and be sure to hang out to the end of the video to see how you can get one of these Weld It Yourself kits of the jackalope. Let's get to it. We started by gathering a bunch of material. A lot of this came from an old shed that I had on my property that needed to come down, and the rest of it was all scraps from Jimmy Dressa. We figured this was a good start, so later that day we took over the dining hall in the Blackthorn and started making a scale model of the jackalope. This was crucial when we built a dinosaur last year, so we built this one the same exact way. One inch on the model is one foot on the final structure. Now we can start building and the first thing to do is to drive in some stakes for the front supports. And I remember this being much easier last year. And of course where we needed to put the second stake, we ran into a couple rocks. We're hammering right into it. Last year's stake? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is... I'm afraid of what we'll find if we keep going. This stake seemed like it was just not budging, but thankfully Mark Adams came and absolutely crushed the driving the stake in the rest of the way. This part of the structure is taking a lot of the weight. So we gathered the thickest boards we could find, and Wesley forgot to turn on his nailer, so I jumped in to get it started. Hey! These boards were pretty warped, so we figured let's all stand on them to close the gap. And that worked out perfectly while we drove in the rest of the nails. The foundation is the most important part of any structure. So we really took our time here to make sure that these posts were plumb before nailing them into the stakes. And if you're wondering, the only job for the stakes is to make sure that these posts stay plumb and parallel with each other and don't spread apart or get closer to each other while we're building the rest of the structure. With those in place, we moved on to the belly, which we're using these two 2x6s for. Right now we're just toenailing them into that top plate but later on we come back and we add some supports to really lock them in place. We added some more stakes at the other end of these 2x6s just in case this whole thing wanted to hinge forward. We locked the two together with these 2x4s, which were absolutely crucial. Not only do they add a lot of support, but we walked up and down these things countless times throughout the build. Moving on to the butt section, we pieced it together with these boards, but as soon as we moved our feet, the whole thing shifted over to the side. So we added one final stake to lock this in place. Now we can start building up, and I really should have been on the other end of these boards holding them because this happened. Thankfully all accidents were avoided and the saw was fine, so we just carried on. These pieces are going to frame the butt of the jackalope, so we figured let's tie these all the way to the front of the structure just to add some more support. They do need to be angled slightly forward, so Wesley held up the model to kind of eyeball the angle so we could figure out where we need to nail it in place. With the same thing done to the other side, I cut off the remaining 2x4 that extended past the front of the belly. This is a really long span, I think it was about 13 feet. So we added another 2x4 support right in the middle.
before we started building further up, we figured let's start adding some sheets just to add some more stability. So with the first one in place, Keith marked the backside where we needed to add another support where the sheet ended. And I traced the back of the butt so that we can cut this out to the appropriate shape. After tacking the first one in place, we added a couple more sheets and you can see that these are pretty wet. It rained pretty hard the first couple days we were here. The event started on Friday, but we got here on Monday so that we can actually have enough time to finish the structure. We figured this is a good time to go up. So we added some 16 foot long two by fours off the front of the belly. And this is gonna frame out the front of the chest and throat area. I was careful to hold these plumb as Wesley tacked them in on the bottom. We also added a diagonal support for extra stability. And once both sides were in place, I tacked them together with some one by fours across the front. Framing out the back was next, and this started to actually look like something at this point. Just like the pieces below, we figured that this is a really long span, so we added some 2x4s in the middle to help support it. With this side secure, I moved the boom to the other side. And you can tell that I'm still getting used to the controls because this happened. I stopped at just the right moment because I was within a couple of inches of hitting that 2x4. You can actually see the framing nailer bounces off against it. After this, the rest of the day didn't work out too great for me. I accidentally grabbed the cutoff from this panel, which was just a little bit smaller than the actual piece that we needed. At this point, most of the frame and structural parts were in place. So we grabbed a bunch of sheet goods and started skinning out the rest of the body. We were making some pretty quick progress. I'm sure all of the experience from last year helped because we felt like we were significantly further along at this point than we were at this point last year. However, it was getting pretty late in the day, so after nailing on these panels on the back, we opted to finish it out the next morning. All of this was feeling pretty good, but we were getting a little bit more side-to-side -side movement than we were hoping for. So Keith had the idea to add these diagonal supports underneath the belly, and this added a ton of support to the overall structure. Over the next couple of hours, we just added a ton of internal supports, and this really stiffened up the body of the jackalope. These supports are pretty high up. It was about in the throat section, which is just about maxing out my reach. So I asked Keith for some help. Yeah, I'm taller. I thought you had These boards are making up the burn platform. So we want fire to actually shoot out of the jackalope's mouth, which means the source of the fire needs to be pretty close so that it doesn't burn up the inside of the jackalope before it reaches its mouth. We added these one by sixes on top of the two by fours, and this is where we're gonna put all of the tinder and kindling to actually get the fire going. We can only reach to nail in one end of these boards, and I already feel you guys typing out in the comments that I shouldn't do this, but I climbed out of the basket to nail in the other end. I felt 100% totally safe doing this. Earlier in the day, we made some grids with some chalk line on some half-inch OSB. So while Keith and I were nailing in the burn platform, 
Wesley was working on transferring all of the shapes for the head and the antlers onto these sheets. We did our best to nest the shapes together to minimize the amount of material that we needed. But these shapes are pretty big. This is only part of the antler and part of the front foot that fit on one sheet. And we need to cut these pieces out twice so they can go on both sides. The head ended up being so big that we needed to cut it out out of two different sheets, which is probably a good thing because it made installing it much easier. The back legs, however, were about three and a half sheets. So we thought the easiest way to get these in place and in line with one another was to first attach them to each other on the ground. If you're wondering, yes, the nails did tie it into the earth a little bit, so it was a little bit tricky peeling this off the ground. Once we got it up though, we bent all the nails flat and I'm not sure where Keith was at this point, but thankfully someone was kind enough to lend a hand. You guys need a hand? Uh, real quick, yeah, that'd be, that'd be helpful. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but if this is you or if you know who this is, let me know down in the comments because moving this leg was definitely a three person job. Keith got back in time to nail the back legs in place, and we opted to kick them out a little bit to give the jackalope a little bit more shape. The front legs were significantly easier to attach, we just nailed them directly into the post that we put in on day one. We moved on to closing up the belly and chest area, and we had plenty of offcuts from the legs and antlers that were perfect for this. Once we got up to the chest, we left the section open and this is where the burn platform is so it'll make it easier for us to load it up later on. One of the last couple things to do is to add the head, antlers, and ears. And we figured the antlers are hanging so far back that we should probably support them. And that's what that 2x4 is for. Once that was in place, we can start adding the bottom section of the head. We needed to get this placement right because we wanted it to angle the head far back enough that the mouth faces the sky, but not so far back that the ear makes contact with its back. Once we got that where we liked it, we added the top of the head and then we can start adding the antlers. Once this side was done, we did the same exact thing to the other side. And it was getting pretty windy this day, so we decided to tie the two antlers together with some cross supports. The last thing we did to really make this look like a jackalope was to add some big teeth. Now we can start loading it up, and the guys took a whole bunch of cardboard and kindling and filled up the burn platform. I climbed into the bottom to get as much of the scrap wood material in there as possible. I pulled a lot of this stuff forward. Ashley was there to lend a hand, and also Ethan from Build It With Ethan, and Stephanie from Uncommon Outpost. The three of them helped a ton in this final push to get it done. And this is what the inside looked like. You can see the burn platform way up top up there, and we completely filled the rest of this in. We actually had one extra pallet, so we cut it in half so we could get it to fit. With that in place, we closed in the back and intentionally left the bottom open to allow air to come in. Then we just waited for it to get dark out so we can light it on fire.
Richard from 42Fab makes these weld-it-yourself kits. This is the Jackalope all flat packed and this is what it looks like when it's welded together. There's a link down in the description where you can pick up one of these as well as last year's design of the dinosaur. If you're new here, my name is Johnny and when I'm not building massive things just to burn them down, I make furniture and art pieces. If you want to see more of that, consider subscribing. And let me know down in the comments what you want to see us build for next year's Maker Camp. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.